innovations in the den are often born out of an entrepreneur's own personal circumstances. For Sheila Hogan, it was an experience of grief which led her to create a digital solution to help loved ones through difficult times. The problem that it solves is universal and we are in the right place at the right time to really get a global market share. And Sheila is so confident in her idea, she staked her future on it. I have put my pension in to get this off the ground, so that's a huge risk, but I've complete belief that this will happen. I'm Sheila Hogan, founder of Biscuit Tin, a tech company that helps people manage their end of life affairs. I'm looking for an investment of 50,000 for an equity share of 5%. Born from my personal experience of closing down the lives of my parents, armed with a biscuit tin full of old papers, and finding out that the way we handle end of life today is completely broken. It had always been taboo for dad to talk about dying. So the amount of decisions that I had to take on his behalf was just overwhelming. The worst one being, what will he wear in his coffin? And torturing myself for days, second guessing whether he wanted to look smart in his suit or casual in his comfy cardi. And it just mattered. And it took me two years to close down Dad's life. And it hit me how much more complex my life and most others these days is compared to Dad's. And so, with my digital background, I created Biscuit Tin, the digital secure vault holding all your accounts, wishes, memories and more in one place that's then released to those you nominate when you die. Our initial route to market is via commercial partnerships with related life event propositions like life insurance, mortgages, pensions, funeral plans, wills, etc. I see a future where everyone has a digital biscuit tin, a world where we actually use digital tools to plan in advance, create a digital legacy and make a real difference to those we leave behind. I'd be delighted to invite you to join me on this journey. A website designed to digitally hold personal documents, memories and wishes in the event of a person's death is the offering from Sheila Hogan. She's asking for £50,000 in return for a 5% stake in her pre-revenue tech business. First to attempt to unlock the potential of the proposition is Sarah Davies. Thankfully, I've not actually had to go through the process that you've gone through yeah. yet. However, the example you chose to give me was a very emotive one. Yeah. You know, helping choose what your father was going to wear in the coffin. I hadn't even thought that far ahead. No. I'm worried about all of the bank accounts he's got and the properties and the things he hasn't started. That, that's the thing that keeps me awake at night, that keeps me on his back. Yeah. How much of what you do is structural high-level stuff and how much of it is the more, the softer side, like capturing life moments? It is both. What this is meant to do is pull it all together so they make it easy for those that have to clean everything up. Well, I love it as an idea, and I have been through it quite recently. And actually, Sarah was talking about the bits that she wasn't worried about. Well, it's funny, when it happens, those are absolutely the bits you worry about. Yes. So. Who else is doing this or what's the closest competitor? There are a couple in the UK and some quite big ones in the US. What have you got that they're not doing? The personal story is the key thing. The story around the way mum and dad met, for example, their favourite book, the favourite film, things like this that is then going to be passed down the generations. So the other competitors don't ask me to put stories or... No. And you do? Yes. Thank you. The USP of the Entrepreneur's Secure Online Vault appears to strike a chord with Deborah Meaden. But Peter Jones believes there may be a simpler solution already in existence. 
if I want to subscribe to Biscuit Tin, what does it cost me? Oh, it costs you 49 99 per annum. But if you want to do something like this and be organised, why would you not just have a Dropbox or something? Because all this is is a depository for information, isn't it? It's that, but guided in a way that prompts you to actually think about all those things. Because nobody would know where it was. How would somebody know where your Dropbox is, for example? Well, you just send them a link. You're going to have to give them access to this. But they can't get access to it until you die by uploading your death certificate, which we then validate behind the scenes. You mentioned you had a digital background in your pitch. Yes. Could you give me a little bit more info on that? Yes, um, so I've been in technology since I left school at 16. Went did coding for a bit, then moved into business analysis, project management, and then for the last probably 15, 20 years, I focused on designing the way businesses need to operate with digital technology, predominantly for the big corporates. And who is, who is in your core team? I've only got two part-time staff at the moment a student who's helping me on the business development side of things, mm. and a, a part-time kind of admin, PA, um, office manager. I just thought the website looked a little bit amateur. The interface looked a little bit low quality. Um, and then to hear that there's not sort of tech expertise within the core team, your digital background is, in a, to be honest, in a different area. I do have the expertise. I've got a digital specialist I work with, pro bono. In terms of the advisory board, though, um, I've got um, three people who have actually grown, scaled and exited tech businesses. But ultimately, the product roadmap for this is that we get to an internal in-house team. Yeah, I think that'll be really important because it's a little bit concerning that you don't have that expertise in your team when it's central to your proposition. Stephen Bartlett questions whether the entrepreneur's team has the know-how to bring her vision to fruition. Now, Sarah Davies wants to crunch the numbers of Sheila's ambitious project. What are you projecting in terms of number of users and revenue? It's one and a half thousand users next year and revenue of 65,000. Loss of 620 overall. Year two, we're looking at um, one and a half million revenue for 40,000 customers. Right, so the loss in the second year? A million. Okay, so just to check all of this, total capital requirement over the next two years is 1.62 million. So the intention in terms of the investment strategy is a 300,000 raise of investments now mm -hmm. and a million in a year's time. But that's not gonna cover everything you need. So 1.3 million of funding, you're still going to be in the red by 320,000. OK. I've obviously said something out of turn in terms of the numbers. Sheila, this sounds like a biscuit team with no biscuits in it. 300k fundraise, how much equity are you looking to give away? 30%. The further 1.3 million you need, how much equity are you going to give away for that fundraise? Again, 30%. And if I was to invest 50,000 today, at 5%, what will I end up with? It would be diluted. To no biscuits in the tin. <laughs> There's nothing left, is there? My big concern is whatever steak I take now is going to be so highly diluted that it's high risk up here, but potentially not the high reward at the other end. So I won't be investing and I'm out. The prospect of an expensive investment with a dwindling return leads to a short and sweet rejection from Sarah Davies, who becomes the first dragon to decline. And Stephen Bartlett has also made up his mind on the biscuit tin proposition. Based on what I've seen from the design, the quality of the technology that you've got and your background, these are all very high level technical things and your experience isn't in that area. So if, honestly, if I was you, completely stay away from trying to build a tech company. You're gonna lose the money and you're gonna have your lunch eaten by Dropbox, Google, the big US tech players, so stay away from it. So with all of that in mind, um, I'm gonna say that I'm out, but I'm gonna wish you the very best. Thank you, Steve. An emphatic warning from Stephen Bartlett, who fears the tech startup could be eaten up by the big players. But e-commerce giant Peter Jones 
has had doubts whether there's even an appetite for the product in the marketplace. The issue that I have is the fact that I get the concept, but to now have to pay for that concept, I'm not convinced that that's something that everybody would just want to sign up to. And with all the other solutions available to me, like Dropbox, it's not a business that I'm going to want to invest in, so sadly, I'm out. Sheila, I like the idea. What I don't like is your plan, where you're going to lose 1.6 million in the next two years. So unfortunately, for that reason, I'm out. Four dragons have now walked away from an investment. Deborah Meaden has previously indicated her heart could be in the project, but will her head share the vision? I think it's a really interesting one because I think the automated bit is going to become really important because we don't want to live with this in our lives all of the time. So I get that. My big concern for you is every time I've embarked on something like this, it costs twice as much money and the consumers are more costly than I thought to engage. And it's just not my style of investment. But I reckon you'll work it out. So I wish you all of the best, and I certainly wish that I'd had something like this in my life a year ago. But good luck, but I won't be investing, Sheila, I'm out. Thank you. Thanks, Sheila. Good Thank luck, you, Sheila. Good, good luck. luck. Thank you. Sheila's hopes of an investment may have crumbled, but she leaves the den with a renewed determination to prove the dragons wrong. Do you know what? I feel good. The whole experience has just been um, tremendous. I think the only thing I take issue with is Stephen's perception that I don't have the skills because I can build a tech company and I will. <laughs>